I want to welcome Dr. Zelenka once again uh, on our channel. It is really a great honor and pleasure having you, Doctor. Thank you, Robert. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, uh, please update us briefly about how you're feeling and how people can be in touch with you. I feel really great, thank God. Uh, I have a lot of energy. I uh, My heart feels better. I can walk easier. Um, I'm still on chemotherapy, and uh, that has its unpleasant side effects, but right now I'm used to it. So uh, no complaints. I'm grateful for every breath. We live in difficult times. Uh, they are, they are you know, tyrannic measures um, that uh, prevent you from sharing your information. And we need to be conscientious and be aware of that. So if people want to be in touch with you and get life-saving information, how can they do that? So I had to open up my own website because the th Twitter suspended me. I had 163,000 followers on Twitter and my tweets were getting 10 million impressions. So that was a very effective way of communicating and but for whatever reason, they didn't like what I was saying. So I started my own website. It's called Vladimir Zelenko MD.com. Again, it's my name, Vladimir Zelenko MD, my degree, dot com. It's free and it has really, really life saving information, uh, which you can download the uh, protocols of, of uh, prophylaxis prevention or treatment. It has access to the latest studies has access to, to all the videos I've done, patient testimonials, and so on. So it's, um, I think it's a very good resource. People have seemed to be really thrilled with it. So, um, and you can always, you can reach out to me by way of the website also. So it's Vladimir Zelenko, md.com. So as we know that knowledge is life, and uh, we want to wish you long life, strength to share important information and prevent disease. And today, I think we also want to emphasize that it's mind over matter. It's not just the body, but, uh, you know, speaking about spirituality, I would like to hear your message to our viewers. Yeah, so this week's um, section of the uh, Torah, the weekly Torah, Parsha, or weekly Torah reading, describes... Uh, very famous uh, dynamic between Joseph and his father, Jacob, or Israel. And it, it's interesting because the Torah is extremely precise. And it says that when Jacob came to Egypt, he was 130 years old. It also says that Jacob lived in Egypt 17 years. And it also says that Jacob was 147 years old when he died. So the obvious question is, if I know that he was 147 years old when he died, and I know that he was 130 years when he got to Egypt, then I can calculate how many years he lived in Egypt, which is 17 years. Why does the Torah have to explicitly say that, that he lived in Egypt 17 years? There's nothing su superfluous, there's nothing extra in the Torah. So if it's something that I could have deduced, calculated myself, there's no need for the Torah to tell you, unless it's trying to tell you something else. So the commentators explain that uh, the seven, 17 is the numerical equivalent of the word for good, tov. You know, we say mazel tov. Tov has three letters. It's a tes, um, vav, and base, a base, right? Yeah. And uh, so that's test is nine and above is six. That's 15. And a uh, vase is, is two. That's 17. So the word tov has the numerical, the gematria, the numerical equivalent of 17. So the commentator is right that the fact that the Torah emphasizes that the Yaakov 
Jacob lived in Egypt 17 years is to emphasize that those were the best years, the, the good, the best years of his life. And why was that the case? Well, because that's when he was reunited with his son, his beloved son, Joseph. So we need to look into this a little deeper because we know that in the beginning of Joseph's life, Jacob and Joseph were together for 17 years. How do we know that? Because Joseph was 17 years old when he was sold into slavery. Meaning that the, for the first 17 years, the father and the son were together. And then there was a period of separation where Jacob actually thought his son was dead. But in reality, he was uh, taken into slavery, into sold into slavery into Egypt and eventually became the viceroy of Egypt, uh, ended up saving his own family from hunger. And the last 17 years of Jacob's life was also with his son. So if you look at the, the whole picture, they were together, father and son, for 34 years. 17 years in the beginning of Joseph's life and 17 years at the end of Jacob's life, which is interesting because this week's uh, name of this week's Parsha is Vayichi, and he lived, and the word Vayichi has the numerical equivalent of 34. So, and he lived, the implication is when father and son are together, that's life. So, we, but we still need to understand why is it is that, la that it seems that the last 17 years of father and son being together is more significant than the first 17 years. How do we know that? Because the Torah comes to emphasize that there the were the best years of Jacob's life. That means they were even better than the first 17 years of Joseph's life when he was together with Jacob. You understand the question? So there's three unique uh, phases, or stages. I think stages is a better word. There is a stage where father and son are together initially. There's a period of separation. That's the second stage. And the third stage is the period of reunification or, or coming back together. So we can take these three unique stages and extrapolate it to the dynamics of the soul you see before the soul comes into a body it is in the higher spiritual realms and states of being and it's explained in kabbalah and in mysticism that the soul basks in the glory of the rays of, div of divinity. And when the soul comes into a body, it's a tremendous descent and concealment of the presence of God. Because all of a sudden, the soul, which heretofore was basking in the glory of God is now trapped in a physical body that has animalistic tendencies, number one. And number two, it's in a dark world filled with good and the mixture of good and bad. Uh, parenthetically, there's a question here you can ask. We believe that God exists and we believe that God is good. So if that's the case, which it is, how is it that taking the soul, which was basking in the beauty of the garden of paradise, and throwing it into a body, how is that an act of kindness? Superficially, it looks like an act of sadism. But that's contradictory to the fact that we believe that God is good. So we need to reconcile that. Now, the third stage is the reunification of the father and son, or by way of analogy, the reunification of the soul back with God. 
in a revealed way. So again, we have three stages. We have the pre-birth era, where the soul is with God, father and son. In this analogy, God is the father, the soul is the son. They're together, and it's beautiful. Then there's the second stage where there's the separation of father and son when the soul descends into a dark place of the body and the earth. And then there's the third stage where the soul leaves the body and goes and reunifies with the creator. And if we follow the paradigm of the story between Jacob and Joseph, we need to understand why the third and final phase is better than the first stage. Father and son are back together. What's the difference? So there's a concept in Judaism called Yerida Tzarech a descent for the purpose of an ascent. Let's understand that. Before the soul came into this world, it was having pleasure from the rays of divinity. However, it was unearned. It was a honeymoon phase, so to speak. You know, a young couple gets married, everything's so exciting, so nice. And then three weeks later or whatever, they wake up, they look at each other, they don't even know each other. Now they're living together and they have to figure out uh, how, how to navigate life. So there was a honeymoon phase, which then fades into reality. So there was a, a honeymoon phase between the soul and God where the soul was receiving, uh, let's even call it unearned, divinity, which is very nice, but nevertheless, it was getting a ray, a reflection of the glory of God, not God himself. It's by way of analogy, the Garden of Eden in comparison to Eden, the Garden of Paradise with comparison with Paradise. It says in the Talmud that no eye has seen Paradise. So you're going to ask, where was Adam? So he was in the garden of paradise. He was in the front yard. He wasn't privy to the inner chambers of paradise itself. And that's by way of analogy where the soul is before it comes into the world. It's in the garden of paradise. Now, by being castigated or sent down into a physical body, some unique properties are given to the new soul body existence which is free choice and consciousness. And, and while the soul is in the body, it could choose whether or not to serve God or not. And by turning away from bad and choosing good, the soul earns for itself an ascent, earns for itself a relationship with the essence of God, which was heretofore impossible to have because in the pre-birth stage, it didn't have that free will. Why is that? Because free will is only possible when there is a concealment of the divine presence. Because if the divine presence is revealed like my hand or my face, then there's no choice. If I give you a $100 bill and a dollar bill and I tell you to choose, that's not a choice because one is obviously more attractive than the other. The choice only exists when two choices are comparable and you can choose either way. So that's not possible in the higher worlds initially. So hence the, the soul was getting unearned divinity. Uh, it was like a honeymoon phase, and but, but when it gets sent down into a body and you have free choice and the soul chooses to turn away from bad and to do good, it earns for itself an ascent. And what is that ascent? That ascent is after the soul separates from the body, it has access no longer to the Garden of Eden only, but to, to paradise itself. Not the Garden of Paradise, but paradise itself. And why is that? It's because it earned, it toiled, it chose with self-sacrifice to turn away from the hedonistic self, animalistic pleasures and to rather subjugate those and transform those drives in the service of divinity. And by doing so, you get elevated from having a relationship 
with the uh, with the rays of divinity and rather with divinity itself not the rays of divinity but god himself so that's the descent for the purpose of the ascent in other words in stage one you had a superficial relationship just like when a couple gets married they think they know each other but they don't then you have the 60 years of fighting and the reconciliation and at the end they really know each other and the relationship then is much deeper and more real than it was in the honeymoon phase so same thing here and this is why the, the torah emphasizes how the last 17 years the reunification of father and son were really good because what is really good really good is the connection and the union of the soul with the essence of god in an earned fashion so that's what this week's section of the torah chronicles is the dynamic the soul dynamic the relationship of father and son not only a father and son physically but the father god and the son the soul and the complex dynamics of the pre-birth life and after life dynamics which ultimately leads us to see eye to eye with god to be one with god to know god the way god knows himself and to bask in the glory of his essence not the ray of his glory but the glory of his essence himself wow what a deep and profound explanation uh and a simple way if i uh, can translate it to my life it means that uh, sometimes things that are given to me and i didn't toil not didn't put an effort didn't uh, actually go through suffering to earn it uh, not deserving and, and and going through life you know trials and tribulations you actually earn and that is maybe why we descend into this world altogether and at the same time uh, the same is true about history of mankind and history of the jewish people therefore our tradition teaches that these 17 years the last 17 years i actually messianic years as uh, Yaakov himself uh, a symbol of Jewish history and whatever he went through and all his trials and tribulations also a uh, prophecy about what the entire Jewish people will go through all the destructions of the temple and everything else but the last years will be good and the Mashiach is on the way I want to thank you so much for bringing light and improving this world and definitely bringing Mashiach closer to our lives looking forward to meeting with you again soon thank you god bless you everybody thank you good gesund and stark health and happy